You're listening to the multiple award losing Dune Steef Audio Fiction Magazine. And now, Rish Outfield, Big Anklevich, welcome to hell. Everybody, welcome to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. I'm Big Anklovich. And I'm Rish Outfield. And it is a dark, frigid, windy night. That's true. Winter has fallen on the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. Yeah, winter's not just coming, winter is here. Oh, it's such a cold one today. And Biggie is feeling winter's bone. Hey, how come you told them about that? Oh, sorry. I was, I meant the euphemism. I didn't realize that you actually physically... And it was Edgar Winter. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> uh, we are back. And yes, we're recording in the car, and there's a, a windy... What what do you call? There, there's a gale going on outside. Is that fair to say? Yeah, you could say that. There's swirling winds, and, and they're high intensity. We were parked in our normal spot out in the middle of a parking lot, and the car was, like, wobbling back and forth, and the noise was so loud, we figured we had to go somewhere else. So we went around behind the store, and we're, like, hiding back in, like, the loading dock area. <laughs> Next to it, I'm waiting for a cop to pull up and be like, what are you guys doing back here? You trying to break into this truck? And yeah, immediately I was just like, we'll tell him we just got engaged. <laughs> and uh, there's a 50-50 chance. He'll be like, congratulations, boys. That's cool. Let me buy you a drink. and Or, or the other thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's 50-50. Um, <laughs> we'll find out. You'll be with us. Yeah. And you'll find out together. Find out if we make it onto the next edition of the uh, crazy cop beating up somebody at a traffic stop video that gets on the news. Okay, so we're back with another story, folks. It's a good one. Yes, uh, today's story is by Desmond Warzel. The story is called Wiki History. And uh, it's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, we, we did this as a, a kind of a... An experiment. Yeah, an experiment. It's a trial run at trying to do a story live on Skype. So we put out a call for people who, want, who were interested in uh, being a character. We just put a Facebook post out there and a bunch of people volunteered. And then we got together on a Saturday afternoon... Or evening, depending on if you're John Hyam or not. I'm not, actually. Okay, good. Because I would have been weirded out if you were. Oh, no, um, he's a good guy. He is, but what in the hell is he doing here in the car with me when he's from Cheshire, England? You Wait, never had it so good. He's not from Cheshire. He's from Liverpool, but Cheshire is nearby. I can't remember exactly. I'm sure I don't know. I can't remember the exact details. You should know with an accent like that. Come on. That's like Justin Charles' accent. Not Justin well, Charles. My name is Justin Charles. <laughs> oh, great. And I leave, I'm a Liverpoolian. I, yeah, okay. I, I go down to Cheshire. And we have a pub there. Moving on. Uh, uh, speaking of Justin Charles, though, I think he put this together for us. But yeah, the, the very briefly, the reason that we wanted to do this trial run is that we had a big story that somebody submitted to us. And I wanted to do it, but I, I just realized it would be too much work because of accents and because of how I wanted the performance to go. And I thought if there was only some way where we could get a bunch of people together and I could direct them. And uh, yeah, we came up with this idea of we could have a virtual get together. And uh, we didn't have to do much direction in this one. But it, if we do do that big sci-fi story, it'll be fun to, uh, to have everyone talk like this. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Except for, for poor John Hyam. I think I might be sick that day. So yeah, we've got a semi-large cast here, and so here it comes. The story is called Wiki History, and uh, Desmond Warzel is the writer. Desmond Warzel has uh, he's put out a bunch of stories. This story was originally, I think, published on Abyss and Apex, and you can also find it on Tor.com. You might recognize his name. He's been on uh, Drabblecast a lot, and I think he's been on Escape Pod. Etc. Etc. He's all over the place, man. He's the man. And this story is a lot of fun. 
So I'm going to say let's just get on into it. That sounds fine. All right, we'll see you guys on the other side. Wiki History by Desmond Warzel. International Association of Time Travelers, Members Forum, Subforum, Europe, 20th Century, Second World War, page 263, 1115-2104, at 1452-28, Freedom Fighter 69, wrote, Reporting my first Temple excursion since joining IATT, have just returned from 1936 Berlin, having taken the place of one of Lenny Riefenstahl's cameramen and assassinated Adolf Hitler during the opening of the Olympic Games. Let a free world rejoice! At 1457-44, Ugh, Silver Fox 316, wrote, Back from 1936 Berlin, incapacitated Freedom Fighter 69 before he could pull his little stunt. Freedom Fighter 69, as you are a new member, please read IATT Bulletin 1147 regarding the killing of Hitler before your next excursion. Failure to do so may result in your expulsion per bylaw 223. At 1806-59, Big Chill wrote, Take it easy on the kids, Silver Fox 316. Everybody kills Hitler on their first trip. I did. It always gets fixed within a few minutes. What's the harm? At 1833-10, Ugh, Silver Fox 316, wrote, Easy for you to say, Big Chill, since to my recollection you've never volunteered to go back and fix it. You think I've got nothing better to do? 11-16-2104. At 10-15-44, Judge Doom, wrote, Good news, I just left a French battlefield in October 1916, where I shot dead a young Bavarian army messenger named Adolf Hitler. Not bad for my first time, no? Six Semper Tyrannus. At 10.22.53, Ugh, Silver Fox 316, wrote, Back from 1916 France I come, having at the last possible second prevented Hitler's early demise at the hands of Judge Doom, and incredibly restrained myself from shooting Judge Doom, and sparing us all years of correcting her misguided antics. Read Bulletin 1147, people! At 15, 41, 18, Barracks Room Lawyer wrote, Point of order, issues related to Hitler's service in the Bavarian army ought to go in the World War I forum. 11, 21, 2104. At 02, 21, 30, Sneaky Pete wrote, Vienna, 1907. After numerous attempts have infiltrated the Academy of Fine Arts and facilitated Adolf Hitler's admission to that institution. Goodbye, Hitler the dictator. Hello, Hitler the modestly successful landscape artist. Brought back a few of his paintings as well. Any buyers? At 02 29 17. Ugh, Silver Fox 316. Wrote, All right, that's it. Having just returned from 1907 Vienna, where I secured the expulsion of Hitler from the Academy by means of an elaborate prank involving the prefect, a goat, and a substantial quantity of olive oil, I now turn my attention to our newer brethren, who, despite rules to the contrary, seem to have no intention of reading Bulletin 1147, nor its addendum, alternate means of subverting the Hitlerian destiny, and here I'm looking at you, Sneaky Pete. Permit me to sum it up and save you the trouble. No Hitler means no Third Reich, no World War II, no rocketry programs, no electronics, no computers, no time travel. Get the picture? At 02 29 49, Ugh, Silver Fox 316, wrote, P.S. To Sneaky Pete, your Hitler paintings aren't worth anything, schmuck, since you probably brought them directly here from 1907, which means the paint's still fresh, freaking noob. At 07 55 03, Barracks Room Lawyer. Wrote, Amen, Silver Fox 316. Although, point of order, issues relating to early 1900s Vienna should really go in that forum, not here. This has been a recurring problem on this forum. 11-26-2104. At 18-26-18, Jason 440-953. Wrote, Silver Fox 316, you seem to know a lot about the rules. What are your thoughts on travelling to, say, Braunau, Austria in 1875 and killing Alois Hitler before he has a chance to father Adolf? I'm asking out of curiosity alone, since I already went and did it. 
At 18, 42, 55. Ugh, Silver Fox 316. Wrote. Jason 440953. See Bylaw 7, which states that all IATT rulings regarding historical persons apply to ancestors as well. I post this for the benefit of others, as I already made this clear to young Jason in person as I was dragging him back from 1875 by his hair. Got that? No ancestors. Though if anyone were to go back to, say, Cheshire, England in, say, 2080 or so and intercede to prevent Jason 440953's conception, I could be persuaded to look the other way. At 211917, Barracks Room Lawyer wrote, Point of Order. Discussions of 19th century Austria and 21st century England should be confined to their respective forums. 1201-2104. At 1556-41, Asian Avenger wrote, Freedom Fighter 69, Judge Doom, Sneaky Pete, Jason 440953, you're nothing but a pack of racists. Let the light of righteousness shine upon your squalid little viper's nest. At 16, 40, 17, Big Tom 44, wrote, oh, Well, here we freaking go. At 16, 58, 42, Freedom Fighter 69, wrote, Racist? For killing Hitler? WTF? At 17, 12, 52, Saucy Aussie, wrote, Asian Avenger, you're not rehashing that whole Nagasaki issue again, are you? We just got everyone calmed down from last time. At 17.22.37 Lady Justice wrote I'm with Saucy Aussie. Asian Avenger, you're making even less sense than usual. What gives? At 18.56.09 Asian Avenger wrote what gives is everyone's repeated insistence on a course of action which, even if successful, would only save a few million Europeans. It would be no more trouble to travel to Fuyuan Shui, China in 1814 and kill Hong Xiu Quan, thus preventing the Taiping Rebellion of the mid-19th century and saving 50 million lives in the process. But hey, what are 50 million yellow devils, more or less? Right, guys? We've got Poles and Frenchmen to worry about. At 1901-38, Lady Justice wrote, Well, what's stopping you from killing him, Asian Avenger? At 1911-43, Asian Avenger wrote, Only to have Silver Fox 316 undo my work? What's the point? At 1959-23, Ugh, Silver Fox 316 wrote, Actually, it seems like a pretty good idea to me, Asian Avenger. No complications that I can see. At 20.07.25, Big Chill, wrote, Go for it, man. At 20.11.31, Asian Avenger, wrote, Very well, I shall return in mere moments, the savior of millions. At 20.14.17, Lady Justice, wrote, just check the timeline. Congrats on your success, Asian Avenger. 1202-2104. At 1052-53... Lady Justice! Wrote... Asian Avenger? At 1141-40... Ugh, Silver Fox 316. Wrote... Asian Avenger, we need your report, buddy. At 1715-32... Ugh, Silver Fox 316. Wrote... Okay, apparently Asian Avenger was descended from Hong Sheshuan. Uh, any volunteers to go back and stop him from negating his own existence? 12, 10, 2104. At 09, 14, 44. Ugh, Silver Fox 316. Wrote. Anyone? At 09, 47, 13. Barracks Room Lawyer. Wrote. Point of order. This discussion belongs in the King Dynasty Forum. We're adults... Can we keep sight of what's important around here? And now, a word about today's story. I'm afraid I don't have any recording equipment here in my unlit Unabomber-style shack down by the Allegheny River. But I hate the sound of my own voice anyway, so it's for the best. Either Big or Rish will do a far better job. Fran Drescher would do a better job. Lovely. Wiki history is a particularly special story for me. 
It was the first piece I ever had published, after several years of trying, as well as all too many years of not trying at all. I won't bore you with the tale of its publication, and what that has meant for my writing life, though I will say that I've gone into great detail on that topic in the infrequently asked questions section of my recently refurbished blog, The Jobless Insomniac's Motorcycle Club, which I'm sure our genial hosts have linked in the show notes. The important thing is that it's still the story I'm best known for, and that it still seems to have some resonance today, though it was written back in the primordial mists of early 2007. The actions that the various characters are taking with regard to Hitler, where some people are always changing something and others are always changing it back, are collectively referred to as an edit war when they occur in a collaborative reference work such as Wikipedia. Had I known at the time that there was a name for the process I was describing, I might have used that as the title rather than Wiki History, a title I find so awkward that, eight years later, I have yet to say it out loud. In any case, once learned about this process, it was just a short conceptual leap from the editing of factual articles to the editing of the facts themselves. The time travel rules in this story are, I think, a variant of Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Time elapsed in the future is time elapsed in the present, or else there would be no suspense about the final time traveler's return. And back to the future. Changes take time to propagate through history. It's a question people often ask. Furthermore, each publication of this story elicits a wave of comments and or emails from armchair time travelers explaining how poorly I chose my various historical turning points and detailing how they would have prevented Hitler's rise. As is usually the case these days, such advice is delivered with varying degrees of politeness. All of it is beside the point inasmuch as the story is not about time travel at all but about online culture, which has now grown far more toxic than I could have imagined when I wrote it. In a sense, so many people missing the point actually helps make the point, and I do enjoy this tiny irony. I'm quite proud to have been invited aboard the Doonstief, which always goes above and beyond to entertain its audience. Sometimes the commentary afterward is more entertaining than the story. Selfishly, I hope that's not the case with this episode— but you won't catch me placing any bets on it. Either way, I'm glad to have them tackle this story, and I look forward to finding out how they handled it. I'm writing this from the past, and so I haven't heard the show yet. I wish I had a book coming out soon, or something else interesting that I could plug here, although a complete bibliography is on my blog, which I'm still sure our genial hosts have linked in the show notes. I'd even settle for a clever quip to close this out, but alas... The muse leads, and I but follow. I'll settle for extending a hearty thanks to the listeners for tuning in, and to the Doonstief crew for years of entertainment. Thank you. Okay, everybody, welcome back from the story. I hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Yeah? Yeah. How many episodes would you say you've said those exact words? Uh, probably 20. Gotta say something. No, yeah, yeah, You're just sitting over there like bump on a log. Well, I don't, I don't have anything laid to there. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, um, that was the story. Uh, we'll give you a quick cast list before we move on to the other stuff. I'm just going to tell you the names of the people that were involved and not what <laughs> characters they played. Because that's too much to come up with off the top of my head. So we had Jonathan Wilson, Bria Burton, Tina Kolakowski, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right, uh, John Hyam, who I was saying wrong, I, I used to think Higgum. of him as John Higgum, but that's not it. It's John Hyam. And John Hyam, by the way, came straight from the Tough Mudder. He, like, just walked in the door, and he's like, yeah, I'm here. Hold on a second. I'm going to go take a shower because I'm still covered in the 15 miles of shite that I had to crawl through to get to the end, and my flesh is still scalded from the wires that electrocuted you as you crawled under them. Uh, and then he took a shower, and he came back, and then we did the, the recording. Well, uh, he also said, thank you, sir. May I have another? Yes. 
And then you told me Marshall Latham. And then Marshall Latham, Rich Outfield, and Vigankovic. I don't think Marshall Latham was there. Okay. I I think he was journeying into another podcast at the time. Yeah. Do you, but you're sure Marshall was there? I've heard, I listened through the story, so. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then you'll have a perspective that I don't have. And yeah, so that's our list of all the folks who uh, participated. And thank you guys for doing that. Um, they all had to give up some of their afternoon or next day afternoon. Wait, how did that work? It was very late in the evening. I want to say it was like 11 o'clock for John, whereas for the rest of us it was like 4 in the afternoon or something. Oh, okay. So it's not. it wasn't that big. It was like when we talked to Gino and it was like next Wednesday. Yeah, I when I put... The call out for people to uh, to join us. I just picked a time, and I tried to pick a time where English-speaking countries would at least possibly be awake. So I, I went through and I worked it all out so that, okay, it's 4 o'clock here, which means it's 5 o'clock in Chicago, 6 o'clock in New York. You know, and then I was like, okay, and in Perth, it's this time, and in Brisbane, it's this time, and in Wellington, it's this time. You know, I went through the whole list. And by the time you were done, you had no energy for podcasting. Yeah, I just laid there. But yeah. Well, she was on the other foot then, isn't it? Yes. In the end, it turned to be it turned out to be unnecessary, because nobody from the far side of the world was um you're saying the master and commander did not participate <laughs> the master and commander was not interested but you know, there were people that wanted to do it it was just a bad time yeah it seems like there was somebody that couldn't do it it was bria probably and then she ended up doing it anyway yeah she managed to get off of work in time i think she wasn't expecting to be able to and then she did so she got there just in time and it really worked out well i i liked it a lot i had a lot of fun doing it i'm really bummed because after we finished i had everybody hang around and record with us you know a a post show with them talking as well but i screwed it up and didn't get the recording right so i don't have that to play for you guys but it was your turn because you know the last episode i screwed (laughs) up and the battery died and we never even checked it and then the time before that, you didn't turn your microphone on when we were recording with Marshall. Yeah. So it's my turn again. We need to stop that. Is what I mean, how long have we been doing this? <laughs> Too long. We should have worked out all those kind of bugs and not do that anymore. But no, we still do. Maybe it's accelerated even. <laughs> He checks the recording just I to make had sure. To, yeah, it's just. <laughs> Are we if... actually wait to grab it again and make sure it's actually bouncing? Can you see my noises being made? Why would not that not be working? I don't know. The record button is going. What have you done to my mic? I don't know. I just. I must. Ah, uh, now a battery's dead on my car. Uh, shoot. I don't know, guys, why we do that. Um, maybe other other people have these sort of disasters happen all the time, and that's why they pod fade. (laughs) It's enough to make them give up. Yeah. Oh, uh, speaking of other podcasts, you asked me before we started recording how this episode came about. And years ago, I think before we even had our show, around the same time we started ours, Escape Pod ran this story by Desmond Warzel called On a Clear Day You Can See All the Way to Conspiracy. And then last year... Norm Sherman was going to run that same story on the Drabblecast, but he decided to do it in full cast as a an audio drama. Dra- what? You said drama. I started to say drama. I've become what I most despise. <laughs> he, so he, he got a ton of people together to do voices on that, and I was one of them, and Dave Robison was the main guy on that. And uh, the story felt totally different done with a full cast than it did just as a straight read. It might have been way back when Steve Ely was running uh, Escape Pod. Yeah, I think it was, because I remember it. Is that the wind that's making that noise? or I didn't hear it. I mean, I heard it, but I have no idea what it was. Anyway, it was totally different, but that story came to life, and it was just, oh, I, I thought it was really cool, and uh, I, I guess uh, Norm talked a little bit about Desmond Warzel at the beginning, and I did a search to read more stories by him, and I came across this one, Wikihistory, on Tor.com. 
And so I messaged him on Facebook and was like, will you be my friend? And uh, after he foolishly said yes, I said, can we do wiki history on the Dune Steve? You just heard it so you know what the story was. But he said, well, you, you're free to try, but I don't think that that's adaptable for audio. You know, I, that, I, I don't see how you could make that into a podcast. And so, you know, having heard the final product, I guess you can be the judge of whether it was adaptable or not. But I just, oh gosh, I loved that idea. The premise, the, the, <laughs> the time traveler. I mean, I guess it's a message board, but it sounded kind of like, you know, just a, go, a whole group of time travelers getting together. And yeah, as a straight read, I don't know that that would have been nearly as enjoyable. But having different voices, right? I mean, you've heard it. What what did you think of the final product? Yeah, I thought it's fun to have the different voices. We came up with the idea of having the the person's name said the same way every time, as though it was you know one of those things that you record onto your phone where they say, "I'm sorry, but." Big Anklovich can't come to the phone right now. I, I liked that one. It's really fun. I don't know. I, I love the story because I spent a lot of time on message boards. Not recently because message boards have mostly kind of gone away. They're uh, much more of a niche thing. I don't know. I, the people that used to do message boards seems to have seem to have gone to Twitter. Instead, which doesn't make a lot of sense because you don't get a lot of space to write stuff on Twitter. But I guess the sense of community maybe is still there. But yeah, back in the day, especially the soccer message board that I used to get on, I would get on that every day. And it was really cool. I mean, I would know about things that were happening before. Like, I mean, like I, I work in the news and I would know news about soccer way before any of our sports casters did. You know, they'd say stuff, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I heard about that a week ago. And, you know, those things were possible because of that community. But, uh, yeah, it was so very like this story. You know, there's always that, you know, the pedantic guy who's like, ah, don't you think that this should be put into this other <laughs> forum? Why are you talking about that here? Just a reminder. You know, the guy who's always like, oh, read the bulletin at the start. And there's always those bulletins that say, read this before posting anything. Um, or you will be banned. <laughs> and there are some message boards where they'd have like little rating systems. Depending on, how, I don't know if it was how many posts you made. Or what it was, if it, how, how you got, maybe it was people liking what you've posted. <laughs> you earn your stripes. You, yeah, you would earn stuff. You become like a more important person somehow by way of that. The, the the thing about message boards too is that you can easily get into the, you know, they talk about flame wars and stuff. That stuff started on message boards, the flame war things. Now they go on, I guess, in Twitter and, and other places, Facebook and stuff. But you have an avatar and you have some fake name and you're just nobody to anybody. So you can say whatever BS you want without any real repercussions in the real world. That stuff kind of started there. And so there's a lot of that kind of crap that would go on. And some of those things, the weird thing was, one of those soccer message boards, it wasn't just people you didn't see. Like, we would see them every week at the games, too. And you knew these people, and you'd have, like, barbecues with them and stuff. And then they would say stuff like they were completely anonymous but they weren't everybody knew who they were in real life and if they really wanted to they could get in their car and go over to their house and beat the shit out of them luckily nobody ever did some people would threaten things i don't know internet's a weird place i guess you you ran you used to get on the imdb boards which are you say they're like the worst of the worst, right? No, no. YouTube is the worst of the worst. Oh, okay. But IMDb existed before YouTube. And it, but it, when I say worst of the worst, it's just really ignorant people will get on there. And by ignorant, I mean like uneducated. People who don't bother spelling anything right or don't, writing complete sentences and just want to type racist slurs and <laughs> obscenities, which is basically what YouTube is now. 
but yeah, I would always make the mistake of going to the message boards of somebody <laughs> or a movie or whatever and find out just the most terrible things that people could say. And it's because of that. It's because you have that anonymity. There's a freedom to that. There's, no, Like you said, no repercussions at all. You can say whatever you want and be as terrible as you want. You can try and pick a fight because you know nothing is ever going to come of it. Maybe maybe some of that stuff is gone. Is it gone down a little bit? Now that we have Facebook where it has a picture of you and you can find your parents' profile and all that stuff, so you people have lost a little bit of that anonymity and you you have to account for the things that you say. People will unfollow you, unfriend you. But, I mean, back in the days of the message boards, you could have a classmate. If you were in high school, you have another guy in your class and you'd never know that he was on that same message board you know, he's, he's eight feet away from you, but you'd never know that it was him. I don't think it's gone away, though. I mean, you still have plenty of trolls doing their thing. A lot of people set up fake accounts or just, you know, brand new account that uh, is just to go and troll on people with. Um, I mean, they talk about cyber bullying all the time, so it's got to be a thing. Even though people know who you are, you'll still say stuff until you make someone want to kill themselves or something so it still exists even despite the lack of anonymity okay well maybe neither of us have the okay sorry i'll speak for myself maybe i just don't have the free time to spend eight hours doing the message boards the bulletin boards or any of that stuff anymore and so i see so much less of it than i used to and it just you know out of sight out of mind yeah that's definitely the case with me that the free time that i have has shrunk and shrunk and shrunk there was a time when i had enough free time to keep this podcast going <laughs> those days <laughs> are long gone but yeah even our own bulletin board that we have for the show i visit less frequent than i used to but there's also so much less going on over there back in the days when you would you know, go on to that page or hit refresh, and there's five current topics that are going. You just be like, oh gosh, I got to keep up with this. But now, you know, you can go there and nobody has posted anything. And, you know, maybe that's partly my fault because I could get on there and start a thread and ask questions. And recently I had asked, uh, should we do a Christmas episode? Does anybody want to do a voice on that? I should have done a Facebook post, I should have done a post on the message board about that but i didn't get around to it you know just life steps in the way and you know i I think bulletin boards are mostly gone though i was gonna say bulletin boards are still going but yeah i'm pretty sure like facebook and twitter have kind of taken the place of bulletin boards but yeah maybe they're still big with (laughs) with that uh segment of the population that has the time well speaking of time it's weird that what you wanted to talk about was bulletin boards, but I wanted to talk about traveling back in time to kill Hitler. Okay. I mean, that's the reason I wanted to do this story is how much fun I thought that was. And we've all thought about it. Well, I mean, almost everybody. Your cousin Jab that's in the clan, he's never thought of it. But we've all thought about going <laughs> back in time and done that stuff. Doing that, you know, and... Just the fact that anybody who jo- who becomes a time traveler, that's the first thing that yeah. they do. Everybody immediately goes and kills Hitler <laughs> on their first mission every time. Anyway, it was just, that was hilarious to me. I mean, that's, oh gosh, I just loved that about the story. And then there was some poor downtrodden guy who had been there a long time who had to fix it. And uh, the funny thing is, I mean, if you, the, the more you read about Hitler, and, and we all owe it to ourselves to read a little bit more about Hitler. But the more you read, you find that there are a bunch of stories of, you know, times when he, he, he might have died in his childhood. The whole Operation Valkyrie thing. The um, Tom Cruise movie? Yeah, Brian Singer made a movie with Tom Cruise in it. Nobody went to it but you and me. And uh, I watched a documentary on that. And that should have worked. <laughs> there needed to be a bunch of dominoes that fell just right so that Hitler was not killed, and they all fell just, you know, at the right angle at, so that he survived. You know, part, part of the wood, one of the bombs didn't go off. Where he was standing, they moved the meeting place at the last minute. The construction of the room where they happened to be, it just, uh, it's one of those things where it's like almost as though someone was looking out for Hitler. I don't know, maybe. 
Maybe it was Silver Fox 316. <laughs> it may well have been. I'm reminded I did a story for uh, Marshall Latham on his show on Journey Into called The Secret Diary, and I believe it's by Cassie Alexander. And it talks about this little boy growing up, and e everywhere he goes, somebody tries to kill him, and they always fail. And, you know, he doesn't know why. There's all these times when, you know, he, he his life flashes before his eyes because, okay, here it comes. Somebody's going to run him down or somebody's going to shoot him or whatever. And then the rifle jams or some townsperson intercedes or God himself, a lightning bolt comes or whatever and prevents his murder. And and uh, it's a really good story. It's over on uh, Journey Into if you want to uh, to listen to it. I We'll put a, a link in the oh, show notes. Okay. That's cool. Um, but history, there's all sorts of coincidences and all sorts of near misses and times when the road took a sudden turn and if it had only gone the way it was going, things would have turned out very differently. You know, World War II was a huge deal because there's so much coverage, there's so much extant video footage and audio and broadcasts and all this stuff. You know, we're able to examine that from every angle. Uh, and then there's a, a hundred different times when the war would have been lost if only you know kind of thing we were i was telling you the other day about this thing where the british were coming to attack the the germans in north africa and the germans were totally vulnerable and they'd been cut off and they'd lost all their equipment and they had they had nothing but rommel gets this idea of covering all the volkswagens the their vehicles with uh like tablecloths sheets and posts so that they all look like tanks from the air. And so the British planes came and from the height that they were at, they're like, oh my God, look at all these tanks that the Germans have. And they turned around and they doubled back to let them know, you know, it's like, well, we were misled. We thought that they were on their last leg. Guys, let's not, this is going to be futile. And it saved all of like Rommel's forces or whatever, just this one little thing that he did. Anyway, there, there, there are hundreds of stories like that of times when some, uh, the, the war would have been won or would have been lost had one little thing gone wrong. You know, like Britain came so close to falling, but at the last minute, after London was in flames, Hitler decided, OK, we're done trying to destroy Britain. Let's attack Russia now. <laughs> and so all of the forces got redistributed and sent up to... Russia, had they just had like one more wave, Britain had no more water to put out these fires. And London was just on fire. They didn't know what to do. They'd just salvage what they could and move on to the next place that wasn't burning. But because of Hitler's ambition and worry about the Russians and uh, the, his dreams of a future where all of Russia would be the new hinterland, whatever the German word for, you know, where all of, of the people are going to live and, and, and build and expand... He decided, okay, well, now it's the time to stop with Britain and, and make a new enemy. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going on and on, but, but this stuff to me is fascinating. Where it's just like one little decision, one mistake that was made, you know, lost a thousand lives or a million lives, etc. Have you ever read Harry Turtledove novels or any of those alternate histories that uh, have become a pretty big genre in its own right yes i mean i've read a little bit of harry turtle dove i've read one of his novels and a couple of his stories and um, robert harris wrote this book called fatherland where the the axis powers won world war ii it takes place in, during the 50s where uh, joseph mccarthy i i think it's going to be <laughs> become president of the united states <laughs> about as a puppet government for germany and how about, how about you? Have you read any of this stuff? There was a story like that that was on a skate pod once way back when. And I think it was Harry Turtle Dove. And I th yeah, I was going to say, I think it was a Harry Turtle Dove story. And I want to say like Ernest Hemingway was in it. And uh, Hitler was like just a average Joe. And I think he was like working with the French resistance or something like that. It was very different. But yeah, I've never read any of the novels. I've never really gotten into the alternate history, although I think that it would be fun. 
seems like World War II is always the, the thing that they center around, maybe because of that, what you said, where oh, any little thing, you know, you change just this little bit and things could have gone completely different. Do you think that, uh, you know, what Silver Fox 316 says is, is true? If you kill off Hitler, then it will change the entire course of the future where he's just like, yeah, you know, no Hitler means no World War II, means no rocketry, means no time travel. <laughs> um, well, certainly America came out of World War II way better than they had ever been before. And America wouldn't have been the world power that it was in the 20th century if it hadn't been for World well, War II. Well, yeah, I mean, they became the world power because all the other world powers were in friggin' ruins. <laughs> I know, I'm just <laughs> saying. So there was nobody else to be a world power. That's definitely what have changed the course of our nation. See, I don't know. I mean, they talk about the millions of people that would have been saved. What did we lose when we lost all those people? What did we lose when we lost all the people that marched off to the trenches in World War I and were put through the meat grinder? What do you mean, what did we lose? What Do you mean, like, would what, those, what would these people have yeah, created what would they or have invented accomplished? or cured? Right. Is that what you're saying? There was millions of people. What did we lose when we lost all these people? I mean, how many Beethovens and... Well, uh, Albert Einstein's. I mean, for every Albert Einstein that fled Germany... There were probably five more that didn't escape. Right. And they might have accomplished great things. We might have gone to the moon. Yeah, that would have been crazy. Uh, it's always kind of that way. Like, how much have we lost when we make these decisions? And I guess maybe nothing. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I do my little side podcast, the, the Ankle Cast, where I'm always talking about, oh yeah, I've got my little inspiring medley, not a medley, what is it, a montage, I guess you might call it, with all these yeah, inspiring quotes put together. And the weird one is the, the Hitler one. I've always wondered, because there's, you know, you get Gandhi on there, you get Kevin Smith, you know, the greats. Yes. And then suddenly there's Hitler, and he's just at the pulpit, and... I mean, there's, he's certainly got energy. Yeah, the weird thing is I have no idea what he's saying because I speak no German. And no shouting German, especially. I thought you did speak German. <laughs> I did do one semester of German. Okay. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, I mean, I have this, the medley, the, the montage of inspiring quotes that is meant to get you. Because how many Beethovens have we lost to just a lack of ambition or... Somebody who's just like, you know what? It's easier to just sit here in my underwear and play video games. So just because we saved a life doesn't mean we didn't lose that thing. It's like you were saying, there's a million different twists and turns that everything can take. And you think about how different World War II could have been if one decision was made differently or this other. How different could your life have been if you changed one decision somewhere along the line what if i married a different person how different would things have gone what if i you took a job in a different place yeah didn't didn't or... take a job here instead somewhere else and you and i never even lived in the same zip code have we ever lived in the same zip code? oh sorry same area code well yeah i i i, I think about that sort of thing i took a bunch of missteps to leave Los Angeles. And sometimes I think about those and I, uh, the regrets that I have and think, oh, shoot, you know, I could have been somebody. I could have been a contender. But then, yeah, there would never have been a Doonstief. I mean, I guess it's possible we could have done a podcast. Via Skype? Via whatever they had in it, 2008. After all, we did a podcast via Skype today. We did, but I think it, it took countless conversations of, we should do a podcast. Yeah, yeah, we should. And then the next time we got together, hey, you know what we should do? What? A podcast. Oh, okay. It took about 20 of those conversations <laughs> for about two years. And then finally we, we started a podcast. If we hadn't had all those conversations, maybe it never would have happened. And I don't know, you know, maybe you would be a professional writer right now and you curse the day that we started the doing Steve. But at the same time, thousands of people know who you are. 
that wouldn't have known who you are if it weren't for... Okay, seven people know who you are. I'm sorry, I overshot. Thousands of people know who I am, but wish they didn't because of this podcast. Thousands of people know who I am and rue the day they ever heard my name. I think Big is right. Uh, (laughs) That's always an interesting thing. I wrote a story, and I think we mentioned this the last time we did a time travel story on the show, but I wrote a story... I think it's been two years now, but it's called Do Over, where a person whose life kind of went the wrong direction gets a chance to go back and change something. Was that really two years ago? That yeah. amazes me. I, yeah, I, I would not have said that. I would have said you were working on it a year ago at this time. You hadn't even finished it yet. Well, I'm pretty sure it's been two. All right. Maybe it was a year ago. Anyway, you know, I think what you, you might be say. right. I just. I don't know, something about that idea I just absolutely love. I cannot get enough of it. I could think up a hundred stories, probably, that are based on that exact same premise. Somebody gets to go back and change things. Maybe he goes back a minute every time he gets to go back. Or maybe he once can go back to some previous part of his life. I don't know. I, it's, I, I just love it. It's really interesting, I think. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it's just me now that I'm 40 years old. Is that correct? Inconceivable. And uh, I just think, oh, what have I done with my life? I need to go back to here and fix it. Maybe it's that <laughs> that's talking. Maybe it wouldn't have inspired me as much when I was 20. Well, I wonder if other people feel that same way. Because, yeah, I think about that all the time. I wish that I had done this, or I wish that I hadn't done this. I wish I had been a little smarter. I wish I had zigged. And the grass is always greener. It's like, oh, the world would have been... My world would have been so much better if... We have these conversations all the time. Does everyone have this conversation? Either with themselves or with their, their friends. Is there anybody who is where they want to be right now that has accomplished all their their goals and dreams that doesn't have huge regrets that just burn a hole in their stomach like swallowed cherry bomb what, what's something that would burn a hole in your stomach a uh, hot poker oh dude a hot coal okay there you go i mean that would not be pleasant to uh, swallow a hot coal but that's kind of what i was saying is that it's not pleasant to think about this. yeah i think so is that a universal thing does everybody feel that way, or are there people that are just like, oh, I'm, I'm content, I'm where I... Hey, look, wrestling's on. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm sure there are people that are that way, people that are just satisfied with their life. I think there are less people uh, that are like that now than probably before, and I think it might have to do with the fact that the world has grown so small. Before, it was you were keeping up with the Joneses, but the Joneses were just the people that lived in your neighborhood. But now you're keeping up with the Joneses all around the... We have people that are your Facebook friends or whatever, and all around the world, you know, you have satellite TV that shows you... You can watch a Bollywood movie. Not this time. You can watch a BBC movie. You can watch etc., The world's become so small that you can look at an awful lot of people that you have to keep up with. And so it's easier, I think, to be dissatisfied with your own life and just think, but the Kardashians have it so much better. I've been keeping up with the Kardashians and boy, they're rich and I'm not. And they got booties. Okay. Well, you're working on yours, man. Yeah, I'm going to totally overtake her. Uh, okay, I, 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 so you're saying that I, almost everybody feels that way. That, I mean, you, you often would hear of people who are at the end of their lives say, I, if I could go back, I wouldn't change a thing. And is that bullshit? <laughs> Probably. Or, I mean, are there really people that would say, I wouldn't change a thing? I, I, and I'm not meaning that in a, you know, you're obviously a moron if you wouldn't change a thing. I'm, I'm actually genuinely asking the question, are there people who wouldn't change a thing? Because, okay, yes, everybody has bad things happen to them. Everybody has tragedies. Everybody makes mistakes and all that stuff. But there are people, a glass is half full kind of people who say, well, I learned from that. And if I hadn't gone to the emergency room that time, 
I wouldn't have this, or I wouldn't have met so-and-so, or, you know, whatever it is. It's like, yeah, it was a really terrible time, but I'm glad that I suffered through it. Uh, I guess I was asking if there are people like that, but I just said... That there are? That there I are. I think there are people like that. There are people who understand that you got to take the good and take the bad and take them both. And then you have the facts of life. The facts of life? The facts of life. Well, I mean, it takes a lot to get them right. <laughs> to get it right? I don't know. I don't know the second verse. When you're learning the facts of life. Ladies and gentlemen, the Parsec-nominated Doonstief team. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, you and I have screwed up so many times on this darn podcast, and we continue to do it. We screwed up in 2008, and here we are, the end of 2015, still having to redo episodes, or it's like, oh, you know what? We lost all of so-and-so's audio. Or there, there was somebody, and, and I don't want to name names, but there was somebody who would, they were producing a story, and they'd save it as an MP3, and then they'd open that MP3, and then they'd save whatever changes as another MP3, and every time that they did it, the sound quality got worse and worse and worse. And it's one of those things where it's like, oh, geez, but they learned from that, and you and I should have learned. I mean, we should never have made the same mistakes again, like... Not check. I mean, how many times did you say we have to have the headphones in while we're recording? <laughs> so I know if the recorder goes off. Right. And yet we did an entire episode last week with the recorder off and we never even noticed it until we were done. What was I trying to make a point? Oh, most people learn from their mistakes. How's that? I was going to say, you know, if we could go back in time and do the Dune Steve over again, I think it's safe to say we would change a thing. <laughs> Yeah, we'd change a thing or two, maybe fix those goofy mistakes. Uh, I once had an idea for a superhero, or maybe, I think he was actually going to be a supervillain, and I was going to call him Minute Man, and Minute Man had the superpower of being able to go back in time a minute whenever he wanted to. Why a villain? Because it leads him to do bad things instead of good things. But wait, 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 it's like... Your boss says, hey, I thought I told you to get that paperwork on my desk. And you said, well, I thought I told you to go f yourself. Right. And then and you're then able you to go, go back, back in a minute, time a minute and you, and you say never it. say it. So you get, you could do all sorts of bad things. Like for one thing. Oh, you, you could, could like punch him in, the, in right. the stones. Right. And then go back a minute and say, yes, sir. And that's what this guy starts doing. I mean, for one thing, you could like, you could probably lose a lot of weight with the power like that, though. Because you could be like, oh, yes, I'm totally... You could eat, like, all the bad things, get that feeling of eating it, and then go back a minute and have <laughs> never eaten it. And you wouldn't need to eat it twice. Yeah, but the food is still there. You've already paid for the food. <laughs> now you don't have it in your stomach. You're still, you're, you're going to be hungry again. Well, maybe you eat it again and then go back a time. You know, you could eat it as many times as you wanted and then go back in time. But, like, all the things. But, like, okay, let's say he breaks his finger. He's able to go back a minute, and his finger is unbroken? It's unbroken, and yeah, he would... So uh, he doesn't physically travel back in time. He just redoes that minute. Right, he just jumps back in time one minute into his body one minute earlier. Yeah, that's supposed to be a bad guy in the Gauntlet series at some point. See, I wish you could go back a minute and write the Gauntlet. Yeah, see, that's, that's um, the thing that would be cool. You accidentally crash your car, boop, you could go back a minute, not make sure to not do the same thing. But if the car accident is bad enough and you die, you can't go back a minute. I mean, you it's get true. that far. Yeah. Um, there and, and is, which, of course, that problem. <laughs> I'm reminded there was that girl, Cheryl, in, in college. She used to call you Minute Man, but it wasn't yeah. for that reason. But, yes, I... I she I, used to call me again and again. Oh, did she? <laughs> well, I have no argument with that. I. <sighs> Anyway, I don't know. I just thought that was kind of a fun idea. It that is was, a fun idea. That was another version of the being able to go back in time and change things in your life. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. I think I've got at least three different... I, I had a third story that went with that, too, and I've forgotten that one. Weird. I don't forget story ideas like that very often. It'll come to you as soon as we turn this off. Yeah, probably. But, yes, we've discussed time travel a multitude of times on the show and if I had it to do over again I would still discuss time travel maybe I am one of those people yeah I think you are 
but um, evil bastards is what those people are called. Uh, I can't remember what I was going to say. I guess it doesn't matter. Oh, no, I was going to try and encourage you to write the gauntlet. We had a conversation. We get we try and get together every single week. And what we used to do is we would get together and we would record a story. And then the next week we would get together and we recorded the episode where we talked about that story. That was in the day when the show was firing on all thrusters. But nowadays, we'll get together and we'll just eat and then we'll go our separate ways or we'll get together and we go see a movie or we'll get together and we just sort of hang out for a few minutes Um, because you come home from work and rather than going home, you meet me halfway. So uh, one of the times we got together, we were talking about The Gauntlet, this this novel that you were supposed to write this summer. And uh, you said, maybe I'll just pay somebody to write it for me. (laughs) And it's weird because I was jealous of you when you came up with the idea for that book. Because it was just like, oh, wait, hey, that's an idea I can really get my teeth around, if you know what I mean by that. It has a lot of meat to it. It's like, oh, I like that idea. And the idea that I had for a novel, I never liked as much as I liked yours for The Gauntlet. Plus, yours felt more, not fleshed out, but it, it felt more like it had arrived with a beginning, a middle, and end, and you knew where it wanted to go. And and with mine, I was just like, oh, well. So so he does this thing for a little while, and then it stops working. The end. But whereas yours, at one point you said, and you know, maybe at the end, it's not the end. Maybe it's just the first book in a series about the gauntlet. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, cool. This is, write it, write it. And then you can start working on part two. Anyway, when you were like, when you were saying, I wish I could pay somebody to write it for me. I was just like, oh, yeah, I, I want to write it. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't work that way. Well, if if I if you were paying me to write the gauntlet, it would be it would be my story. It wouldn't be your the story that's in your head anymore. Yeah, that's true. And it, it would go very differently. Even if you were there to say no, 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 and then he does this, and I was like, well, but I'm writing it. Um, <laughs> it it wouldn't have your voice. The same way. If I was, to, if I was to pay you to write it, then it would go that way. You'd be like, no, I don't care what you say. I'm writing it. I don't care how much right, you pay me. But even <laughs> even if you're the puppet master, even if everything you say gets done. It's still not the story that you would have written had you written it yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like I am a writing program that just echoes what you say. It, anyway, I guess what I'm just saying is uh, you really ought to write that thing. Yeah. Or, or when you die, I will write it. <laughs> well, I'm going to die soon, so there's that. Wouldn't you rather... Be on your deathbed and say... I'm going to be on my deathbed and just say, you know what? I wouldn't change a thing. <laughs> That's I know a I had pretty a, great dream, though. To... I know I had a heart attack at 41 years old, but you I see, wouldn't have eaten one less donut. Have we talked about that on this show? Your grandfather died at 41. Yep. And when we were kids, 41 was old. Holy cow. I remember... Reading that Harrison Ford was 41, I was like, wow, that's old as the hills. Han Solo and Indiana Jones, they're not 41, are they? And no, he was playing somebody way younger than who he was. <laughs> but now, it's like 41 is not old at all. But yeah, there's no way in hell, right, that your grandfather died saying I wouldn't have changed a thing. Right? Did you know your grandfather? I did not know my grandfather. No, I was I was still not even... My, my dad was like 12 or 13 when his dad died so well then was... then you don't die at 41 saying i wouldn't have changed a thing you die saying i need a little more time right my boy I don't is think... only 12 years old yeah i don't think anyone dies at 41 thinking yep that was all there was for me although it was so i mean i don't know it's funny because my dad used to say that when he was younger i remember when my dad hit 41 or actually, I should say, when he hit 42, and he's like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> I outlived my dad. He had a competition going with his yeah. dead father. He's just like, oh, now everything else after this is just gravy. That's a good attitude, though, actually, to say, you know, hey, now it's all gravy. Now, it's like when they say life begins at, when do they say life begins? Is it 30 or 40? They or say 50. 83. Yeah. It's um, one of those things to try and make you not feel old. They say, like, life begins at 50 or something. I like that, though. The, the idea that life begins at 50, that it's like, hey, all is not lost. You're not over the hill. You can still accomplish your dreams or whatever. 
Those are encouraging words. I'd like to hear you have uh, Joseph Stalin say that at the beginning of your podcast. <laughs> Maybe over the hill, but it's one heck of a ride down to the bottom. Yeah. Is that another saying? That... I just made it up. I don't know. It might be though. The, the, I, I would leave the yeehaw off, but I mean, unless you're picturing the General Lee on your motivational poster, <laughs> that might work. I was thinking more of a sled. Ah, okay. And a snowy hill. A, a picture of Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah. On a sled. Who, who did the cover art for this episode? That was one of the voice guys, right? Yes. It was Jonathan Wilson who did that. Okay. We'll ask Jonathan Wilson to make us a motivational poster that says, blah, 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 yeehaw. <laughs> and uh, was it, what is it? All, it may be downhill from here. I may be over the hill. It's a hell of, oh, okay. I may be over the hill, but it's a hell of a ride to the bottom. Something like that. So the long... Way to Tipperary. And yes. It's a long way to go. All right. <laughs> yes, that, that uncomfortable silence means we've come to the end of the show. <laughs> um, but it was a hell of a ride to the bottom. It was. Hey, I want to thank the people who gave up an hour of their day. Was it only an hour or was it, was, it more than that? Oh, it was probably four. <laughs> you Poor people. Yeah, see, now if you could do those four hours over again, <laughs> you would definitely you would change kill a thing Hitler or two. And yes, you would impregnate Bridget Bardot. Those are the. Uh, sorry, uh, let's rewind uh, one minute, minute, man, and, uh, and have me not say that. <laughs> Zip! So we've come to the end of the show, and I want to thank the people who gave up a portion of their Saturday to lend their voices and. I know nobody ever comments on the show, but if you wanted to comment and say you would be up for doing one of these Skype calls, that might be motivation to me to actually do that uh, that story. Can yeehaw! You... Yes, okay, is that yeehaw? See, that's how we should have ended the, <laughs> ended the show. Thank you, Justin Charles, for producing. The man is tireless. He's a, a, a metal endoskeleton with a living human shell around it he's more machine than man now well yeah but not the part that you see every once in a while when the light is right you can see that his eyes are red but the rest of the time passes as one of us he absolutely will not stop ever until the dune steve continues <laughs> okay he doesn't like us talking about him here i'm doing it again <laughs> it's not a perfect metaphor but but yeah thanks for your help and, uh, yeah, it'll be exciting to do this again. I think our uh, pilot program of doing this was successful enough that we're definitely going to go for it. For the big, long, gigantic story that Rish was planning on doing. So, keep an eye out on Facebook for when we put out the next call. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's something that we'll do. I started listening to this podcast. It's a new podcast. It just started in 2015. And every episode, he gets on at the end of the show and he says, a lot of people have wanted me to do episodes more often. They want more episodes. And you know what? I'd love to do it too. But I just, I'm not able to manage with my job and the free time that I have. If you would donate to the show, I think we could do more episodes. Anyway, he does this rote thing at the end of every episode where he takes up like three or four minutes talking about donating to the show and ways that you can support the show and go out into Amazon and buy my books that they're on Goodreads and you can go on to iTunes and give five-star review and you could mail me little vials of your sperm. Do you remember when we asked people to do that? We only got one. Yeah, but, you know, I never mentioned this to you, but you put your return address onto that package, you realize. Oh, shoot. So, yeah, we, we oh, know. Oh, it automatically prints on there. I feel. Yeah. We, we know where it came from. Okay, never mind. Let's erase that one minute as well. <laughs> if you would like to donate to the show, we would appreciate it. And probably take it as a hint that you want more shows. Most definitely. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. I've been Big Anklevich. And I've been Minute Man. <laughs> Minute Boy. 
12.5 seconds, boy. <laughs> Rich Hatfield. See you later, folks. Good night. On three, everybody make fun of Rish. Thanks for listening to The Doonstief. The Doonstief is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. So you can give it to anyone, but you cannot change it or make money off it. Believe me, we know that from experience. Okay. Wasn't recording. Damn Peter on! Are you freezing? Cold? I feel this thing. Yeah. Wow. I got you to touch it. Take two. No, hit no, record. Start recording first. Yeah, hit record now. And then once we're recording, everybody will go one, two, three, clap. And then we'll use that clap to sync everybody up so it'll make it editing easier. Uh, you know what? Hold on one second. I'm going to run and close the basement door. I can hear the Wii music playing. I can hear the Wii music playing. <laughs> oh, it is closed. Shoot. Hopefully that's not a problem. Okay, one, two, three, and then clap. Ready? One, two, two three. three. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone right. was off. Good stuff. Wiki history. Should I say wiki or wiki? Wiki, I would wiki. say. Wiki. Okay. Reporting my first temporal excursion since joining AI to T. Uh, let me say that again. Reporting my first temporal excursion since joining IATT. Have just returned from 1936 Berlin, having taken the place of one Lenny Riefenstahl's cameraman. And in, uh, having taken okay. the place. Hold on, Marshall. <clears throat> having taken the place of one of. Ah, gotcha. Okay. And also, I want you to say that first line again and see if you can get I A T T out without a pause between joining and I A T T. Gotcha. Okay. Reporting my first temporal excursion since joining AITT. Okay, one more time. It's I A T T. <laughs> AI. Not AI. I A. I A. I A. I A. International Association, not Association Internacional. Aha. Aha. Reporting my first temporal excursion since joining I. I can't do it. I A T T. I A T T. Silver Fox 316. Do the sigh and then... Uh. Oh, yeah, do a sigh. We want you to be kind of... Uh. You're the guy that is so put upon because you have to fix everybody's thing. Uh, okay. So, yeah, we want to... <sighs> Silver Fox 316. Uh, I was having... It was cutting out thing. a little bit. Yeah, it was cutting out a lot. So I don't know if ever... Does that happen to everybody then? Yeah. It happened yeah, to everybody. That's what I heard. <laughs> okay, oh, I'll... Darn. Just do it again, just for safety. I don't. I couldn't say whether you got everything right or not because it kept cutting out. Okey yeah, dokey. that's probably that's probably pretty good. As we go, you'll get more disgusted with this, but uh, <clears throat> just remember that this is what you do every single day because that's what we all do when we join up. I just cleaned up this place. <laughs> One more time and put more nasal into it. I think you lost a little bit on your second take. I post this for the benefit of others, as I already made this clear to young Jason in person as I was dragging him back from night. <laughs> I'm a first mess up. <laughs> Point of order. Discussions of 19th century... Hold on, Os Marshall. <laughs> More nasal. More nasal. All right. <laughs> she sounds saucy and Aussie. <laughs> <laughs> At 1722, 37, Lady Justice wrote, uh, Do your Lady Justice name one more time. I want you to be like, I don't know, for some reason this name sounds like a super proud name. Okay. Um, Lady, Lady Justice. Is yeah, that too that much works. like Lord Doom, though? Or I want to be like, Lady Justice. Lady Justice. Yeah, almost like you're saying your name is Wonder Woman. All right. <laughs> so is that, you want me to do it one more yeah, time? No, that was perfect. Okay.
It would be no more trouble to travel to Fuyu. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. All right, let me re let me remember how I said this. Let Fu Yuan Shui, Fu Yuan Shui. Okay, it would be no more trouble to travel to Fu Yuan Shui, China, in 1814 and kill Hong Xiu Quan. Dang, man, that was good. But you put a W in Fu Yuan Shui. You said Shui instead of Sh Wait, is it Shui? I guessed that. <laughs> I think it's Shui. Oh, okay, never mind. The UI together, I think, it makes a kind of a we. I don't know. Yes. I'll do it one more time. Actually, it seems like a pretty good idea to me, Asian Avenger. Ah, let's try that again. Uh, that was good, but stress descended. Sorry, big? Oh, I was going to say, should we have him butcher Hong Xiu Quan a little worse? <laughs> or I was trying. <laughs> Or do we want him to sound Sheshwan. like he... Szechuan or something? Hong Szechuan. I like that. <laughs> okay, that's pretty That good. works. Point of order. This discussion belongs in the Qing Dynasty. Oh. This discussion belongs in the Qing Dynasty Forum. We're adults. Can we keep sight of what's important around here? Uh, when you say we're adults, be... we're adults... You know, stress that adult part a little bit more, I would say. Okay. We're adults. Can we keep sight of what's important around here? All right. What'd you guys think? <laughs> that was good. That was like good. Everybody works with somebody like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We so... made it. Yay. <clears throat> Huzzah. I wish I had a chalupa, I did one here with you. Everyone around me could have a bite or two. I love chalupas, do you love chalupas? Chalupas are good. I could have chalupas, I would want chalupas right here in the woods. We could have a chalupa party, everyone could come. You could come and you could come, but not Prince Cryden, because he is scum. I have on good authority, scum. I don't know how to end the song, but chalupa's fun.